Hi, mamas. We are here with Tramika Craddock. Thank you, Tramika, for coming and uh, being with us today. And we're so excited to learn from you. Uh, Tramika is a certified lifestyle coach and entrepreneur for about 12 plus years. And she helps moms find a healthy balance between life, family, and business. She teaches systems and strategies in four main areas, time management, planning, organization, and self-care to help moms live their best lives now without compromising family. I think we all need that, Tramika. Thank you for yes. being here and being willing to talk to us about these uh, hot points, I would say, as a mom. It's hard to do all of these things, and it's we will take any tips we can get from you. So thanks for being here. Awesome, and thank you so much for having me as well. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, you bet. So the first uh, strategy we want to talk about here is time management. Mm -hmm. How how can we manage our time to balance everything? Because sometimes it feels almost impossible <laughs> as yeah. a mom to be able yeah. to balance everything and then feel like you did your best. So what kind of tips and tricks do you have for us that can help us manage our time a little better? Sure. So great question. And like you mentioned, uh, it is difficult to try to balance all the responsibilities we have as a mom. Right. And so then most of us as women, we're we, we even are. It goes beyond motherhood. So we have other responsibilities like we may work, we may have a business, we may be married. And so there's all these different um, plates that I call more hats that we're trying to balance at one time. And so um, sometimes we tend to beat ourselves up or we feel guilty when we're not getting or addressing the particular task for the day um, as we feel like we should, right? And so one of the biggest tips that I like to give my moms is looking at our day-to-day -day from a week perspective versus just a single day. And so if you tell me, or I write down this never ending to-do list, at least that's how I feel like sometimes like it never ends, right? We cross everything out, but then you add like what, five more things. So it never <laughs> yes. ends. And so if you gave me a list of, let's just say 25 things to do, and you asked me to get those 25 things done in a matter of 24 hours, it seems super overwhelming, right? And yes. so the strategy that I teach or the hack or tip that I like to give is looking at it from a week's per perspective. So instead of looking at 24 hours saying, okay, I have 168 hours in the week to be able to get tasks done. So super, super better, takes off all the pressure. Um, if you tell me 25 items in 24 hours versus 168, it's like, oh, okay, I feel like I can accomplish that a little bit better, right? So that's yes. the first tip um, that I always love to give make sure you're looking at everything from a week perspective and kind of breaking things down throughout the week versus feeling like you have to get so much done in just a 24 hour period. You don't need to cook every day. Maybe some days you have leftover days. Maybe some days you go out to eat. You don't absolutely need to do laundry all or chores all in a full day. Break it up. Clean the bathrooms on Tuesday. Clean the kitchen on Wednesday. Different things like that is going to help us kind of spread things out where we don't feel so overwhelmed and feel so pressured and we can manage our time just a little bit better so that we can maximize the time that we're given. I love that. Yeah. So I think the couple of things you mentioned is just that list never ends and you feel like, yeah. I'm like, Oh, I got laundry done this week. Yes. Okay. And then <laughs> you go into your kids' rooms and you see another pile of clothes just mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And but I do like that how you said, hey, don't look at it as a day, but look at it as a mm -hmm. as a week and plan your time out that way. That's awesome. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So organization, how what kind of tips can you give us to make life a little easier by organizing? So I love organization. Um, so two main tips that I like to give when it comes to organization. The first thing is hot spots. Like the spots that you're frequently in all the time. So in your home, and everybody's home is different, right? So in your home, it may be the kitchen, it may be the living room. Everybody's kind of gathering together um, with everything going on in the world right now. A lot of us are home a lot more. So what do those hot spots look like, right? So it could be the bedroom, the kid's closet, because you're picking out clothes every day. Maybe your area where you're putting on makeup and your bathroom, all those hot spots. Making sure those hot spots are organized 
So if you don't get to the garage, if you don't get to the attic, if you don't get to the basement, it's okay. We're all going to live. But making sure the hot spots are organized is going to help you move more efficiently, smoothly, and um, effectively throughout those areas. And so I remember times where it's like getting the kids ready for school and then my child can't find their other shoe. Like, oh my God, now we're 15, 20 minutes late, right? And so yes. making sure those particular areas are kind of organized, again, the hot spots is going to be super important. Um, the, the second tip that I would give on um, when it comes to organization, I have moms where like, like the whole house is just crazy. Like, I don't know where to start. I don't That's know what, what I was going to say. What if, what if every room <laughs> is your hot spot? <laughs> right. Everything Speaking from do. experience. <laughs> I have a suggestion or a tip for you. And so 15 minutes a day decluttering. So start okay. 15 minutes a day. So typically, um, like the example I always like to give is my garage for whatever. We don't live in the garage, but I don't know. It always seems to get chaotic out there, right? And so <laughs> I'll walk through the garage when I come home and I'll look and I'm like, okay, I need to tackle this. But I know it's going to take me about four hours. Well, I'm not going to do it today. I'll try again tomorrow. And we keep putting it off and putting it off because you're looking for this big, large time to be able to go out and tackle it all. And then you're feeling like the anxiety and pressure, knowing it needs to get done, but then anxiety and pressure on the other end, knowing that I really have a whole four hour block of time. So, so the 15, true. yeah. So the 15 minute a day um, strategy for decluttering is super, super important and it works, right? And so if you do 15 minutes, let's just say three times a week, four times a week, every day, um, however that looks, eventually over time, you kind of get to everything instead of looking for a big block of time to go and tackle it at all. So you're saying like 15 minutes, so 15 minutes, three times a week in the garage is what you're saying. So just or Any whatever place. Yep. Yes. So like, say it's the garage. So you go, okay, I'm going to focus on the garage this week. I'm going to take 15 minutes while I can. I like that. Mm-hmm. Cause as a, as a mom, you really get stopped 15 mm-hmm. million times a day. <laughs> so right. you, every 15 minutes you're stopped and you have to go do something else or help another kid or, or run to the store mm-hmm. or do whatever. So it's a busy time. I like that. Thank you. And then mm-hmm. the next one is planning. So how do you plan if you're not a planner? Me. <laughs> I am a fly by the seat of my pants. I do have to plan for some things, obviously, but how do you plan if you're not so much of a planner? What's a good place to start? So a good place to start is I would say, so the strategy that I teach with planning is planning out the week. Again, looking at it from a week perspective versus day to day, right? And so the strategy literally is called Sunday prep. Um, yours can be Saturday, it can be Monday, whatever is the least busiest day of your week. You kind of sit down, look at the week ahead, look at any appointments you have, look at those concrete activities that may not change. Like if you show up for work, particular hours, baseball practice, extracurricular activity for the kids, you kind of look at what's coming up and you kind of plan accordingly, planning like your meals accordingly, like, okay, Tuesday, I'm going to be busy from sun up to sundown. May not necessarily be a good day that I should try to cook a meal because I'm going to get frustrated, right? I, I, right. I need to get it done. The kids have to eat. I yes. need to eat. But it's just too busy. And so maybe it looks like you cooking on Monday and having leftovers for Tuesday or shooting by the place that does the dollar tacos on Tuesday, right? And so just planning out so that you can maximize your time and be as productive as you can throughout the week. And so for the person that's just like, oh, I like to just blow with the wind. Um, I don't want to be structured. I I really don't plan. I would just say start with a, a few days a week. So for me, I plan out my whole seven days. If you can't do that or don't desire to do that, start where you are. Start maybe this the next day. I'm going to try to put some concrete things in just for my next day so that I can make it to the next day, right? (laughs) And then maybe trying to increase that by doing it a couple days a week. But I literally um, sit down on Sundays and there's three main components um, that I plan out. I have a household calendar that I display. It's literally in the kitchen on a whiteboard. It tells everyone, um, my oldest, she works. So it has her work schedule. If I'm doing, um, I run my business from home. So if I'm doing like any business calls, anything, you know, it has that on there. If there's any type of appointments, everything so that the house is on one accord, we kind of know what's going on throughout the week as a family, right? 
The second component to Sunday prep is I do the meal planning. And so I will sit down, um, say what we're going to eat for like the next week or so. And then I literally put everything on that board. So everybody's familiar with what we're going to eat, um, the menus out there. And it helps me as well. It helps me not only grocery shop, but it's going to help me to know like, okay, Trinica, today is Tuesday. You're going to be super busy. It's not a day that you should be cooking. (laughs) <laughs> and then the third component to that, um, for me, it would be business for someone else. Um, if you're working, maybe it's your work schedule or whatever that looks like. But for me, it's having my business calendar um, together, everything that I have to do for the week. And I put that in a planner, handwritten planner um, that I keep on my desk. So those are the three components of that Sunday prep strategy. Wow, that's a lot of organization and a lot of... <laughs> Amazing planning and time. And th- this makes me want to be better <laughs> with meals because I do get stuck in those moments where I'm like, oh, it's four o'clock. What am I going to make for dinner? Yes. And then I, and then I am like, okay, next week I'm going to be a lot better. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to sit down, but I love your strategy of sitting down and doing it all at the same time. So then it's just mm-hmm. done. It's done. And your big calendar where your kids know what's going on and they know what to expect. Yes. And then you know what to expect. And it reminds you that's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Tremika. You've given us some awesome tips on how to organize better and take care of ourselves and plan. And it's been, it's been really enlightening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks.